This is clickbait, right? You're sitting there probably thinking you're fine because you just bought a two terabyte SSD for your PlayStation 5 and you're playing games on it no problem, but I'm here to tell you today that you could potentially be bricking your PlayStation. Hey, what's up guys, it's Valley, and today I'm gonna talk to you guys about something that I've personally experienced twice so far. If you're new here, a sub to the channel would be really appreciated. Only 5% of you guys watching this channel are subscribed. So literally anything helps. Reddit threads, articles, tweets, and YouTube videos. All of them covering the subject and it seems like nobody cares. Well, I care. I'm one of the unlucky few that this has happened to and it's just really infuriating because I had to dig around on the web to find any sort of answers and I felt like I was in the minority. Oh, this is the second PS5 that I've had that was, um, let's just say a little wonky. <laughs> After, after an update. You see, a few months back, Sony released the update to allow M.2 SSDs to work with the PlayStation 5. And I was one of the first people to jump on board and purchased a 180 Canadian dollar XPG Gamax S70 Blade SSD for my PlayStation. It was one of the few SSDs at the time that had the 7,000 megabyte read and write speed that you need for the console. And about 20 days later, it just stopped working. My console just wouldn't turn on, and after reading some articles, I came to the conclusion that I had the blue light of death. I thought my console was just dead and there was nothing that I could do about it, so I did what any normal person would do. I contacted Sony support and I had an RMA ready. The box to ship the console out was on the way, and then I got a, a message in my inbox telling me that I had to take the SSD and make sure no peripherals were plugged into the PlayStation at the time of shipping the console out. And then I just kind of had a eureka moment. I'm like, wait a minute, the SSD. What if the SSD is the problem? So I took the SSD out of the console and I went to go turn it on and it just, it worked. It turned on and everything was fine. I spent some time later doing some diagnostic. I plugged the SSD into my computer. It wouldn't read, it wouldn't format. I downloaded XPG's proprietary software and it wouldn't even recognize the drive. So the drive was officially dead. Knowing the drive stopped working, I went straight to Canada Computers and I got it replaced. The technician there told me the exact same thing, he couldn't get it working, so they let me take that credit and use it toward another drive, and I bought an SN850 from Western Digital. I figured maybe because I'm gonna be spending a little bit more money on the drive, maybe, just maybe, it will work a little bit better. And that's how we got here today. After about six months, okay, six months of the drive being fully operational and working, it died again, the exact same same problem. So I started to do a little digging and I found out that this is actually not completely uncommon for people. So first thing to note, thank you Western Digital for having a five year warranty on your SSDs because I'm not going out of my way to repurchase another one after having two drives fail already. So I sent an RMA request and they had a new one delivered to me in a few days and no, I did not put it in my PlayStation. So I started looking online and this turns out to be a pretty common thing. Like the sample size is still pretty small considering there's millions of PlayStations out there and probably millions of them that have other SSDs installed, but this is still a problem. And after looking it up online, not Sony, not anyone has made any sort of statement regarding this being an issue. It's funny because a few weeks ago, I made a video roasting Xbox for having proprietary SSDs in my Xbox video. And now it's just like, maybe that is the way to go. Like maybe having a really small sample size of SSDs that could fail and having like one manufacturer make those drives is probably a really good idea now. Now, if you're asking me what happened to the drive, I, I don't have a clue. Like it could be due to heat and it could just be the way the console's writing to the drive. It could just be some sort of issue with the firmware, but it still happened. This $500 console has bricked two of my SSDs and actually that's not even the worst of it. I found online that this has happened to people and it's completely killed their console. So I'm making this video as kind of like a PSA to like kind of guide you guys through the SSD buying procedure because I've used the XPG Gamax S70 Blade and I've used the SN850 from Western Digital 
and both of those had problems. Now, I haven't used a drive that has a heat sink built into it, so if it is heat, well, that could be a problem, but, but the XPG especially was branded as being used for the PlayStation. So despite the lack of a heat sink, there's still confusion, especially to like the average consumer who's not gonna be paying attention to something like that. So what can you do? Like if you're gonna have to upgrade your storage somehow, what, what do I recommend? What, what is probably the best route that you can take? And personally, I would be on the safe side and buy a drive with a heatsink. I would still stay with Western Digital or maybe even Samsung because they do have really good RMAs. They do have really long warranties and they back their products 100%. I would stay away from any cheap drives and I would, I would just try to read reviews on the drives before you buy them, like especially for PS5 because even with the XPG drive, after I got it returned at Canada Computers, I went on Amazon and I found that people actually had this problem. So this seems to be pretty widespread and I'm just kind of making this video as like a PSA, like I said, for those of you guys that are looking into upgrading. Personally though, I don't think I'll be installing another SSD in my PS5 until we get some more information on what's going on or at least until Sony makes an official SSD for the PlayStation because I would personally would rather use something that is 100% backed by Sony for use in the PS5 then go ahead and buy another third party drive and have the exact same headache over and over and over again. No, I am not putting the Western Digital drive that I got back from the RMA into my PlayStation that is now at home in my computer and I'm not worrying about that one bit. I'll just have to have less games on my console, I guess. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video or you found it even the least bit informative, I'd really appreciate a sub or a like or a comment, anything you could do to throw my way that would help out the channel. It would really mean a lot. Thank you guys for watching and have a good one. Peace out.